hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with neural networks and so far we have discussed about the various learning rules uh, the five basic learning rules and also some uh, neural network models based on different learning mechanisms so in this video we are going to discuss uh, an important concept related to neural networks it is not uh, you know specific to a particular model or learning mechanism it is a general concept which is linear separability okay now before we discuss this now we all know that a neural network a basic neuron model it consists of uh, the input the input values it uh, it can be of multiple layers input layer output layer and hidden layer or intermediate layers but a general neuron it consists of inputs it can be single input or multiple inputs and it consists of synaptic connections which connect the one neuron to the other which associate uh, with weights suitable weight values and then we have the output the output it depends on the activation function now all of these things associated and also there are other parameters such as threshold and bias and various other things are also associated with it so all of these things it is done to solve a problem okay to solve a particular issue it can be related to uh, sensors, transducers, automation system, measurement system, to uh, maybe for a logic circuit, okay, programmable logic circuit, or for any other purpose, process control, or anything to achieve a desired output, any suitable actuation purpose, anything. So, the basic principle is that all the problems that we identify or we see in the real world all the issues they are not linear it is not that we give a out input and we expect and we can be sure that the output will follow a suitable mathematical relationship no it is never like that we approximate it we approximate the response of any machine or anything and we try to fit it into a mathematical relationship which is close or which is very close or approximation of that machine okay in real world the technical situations or events or anything that we encounter they are not linear in their nature 99% of them they are non-linear 99.99% of them actually they are non-linear what we are studying is basically we are trying to mold them fit them into a suitable mathematical relationship which is an approximate uh, you know we can say an approximate result or approximate representation of that problem so that we can approach them in a systematic way we can apply suitable uh, principles to that for that reason we are approximating them so neural networks which are used for solving a particular problem they do not give exact solutions they give approximate solutions based on the approximate mathematical or any other relationship or model or algorithm that we are using so the concept of linear separability it basically involves out of all the inputs that we are giving to the neuron model or the neural network it involves dividing that entire input space into specific regions depending on the output response okay so depending on the output response uh, output response we can demarcate we can uh, we can separate uh, we can uh, separate the whole input space or region into specific areas so here uh, the concept of decision line it comes into play which separates the positive and negative responses 
okay basically it is used for binary uh, activation functions also maybe for bipolar activation functions also we can use this approach now we all know the activation function which is associated with any particular neuron that is applied over the net input and these are the commonly used activation functions we have already discussed them so i will not go into uh, no discussing again them so you can watch the videos in the neural network playlist so all these things uh, the activation functions be it binary bipolar or any other thing if we uh, use them for a particular reason to solve a problem and we consider that the output it is either positive or negative we can assign different notations if it is zero then it is positive or if it is one it is negative or the opposite one means positive zero means negative or one means positive minus one means negative so depending on that whatever we uh, uh, we have our own convention for that depending on that we can convert the whole input space the whole set of inputs into different regions which will give us a fixed output value so let us consider a single layer neural network model it consists of three actually two input neurons one bias and a single output neuron the net input it is given by x1 w1 x2 w2 plus p b is the bias value w1 and w2 are the weights associated with neurons x1 and x2 and the output now here depending on the number of inputs this whole equation okay this whole net input equation it can take different forms a simple equation of a line equation of a plane equation of an ellipse parabola hyperbola whatever we want to make it out of it by changing the input number of inputs or the weight values we can uh, convert this whole equation the net input into different forms okay now here the threshold value plays an important role the threshold depending on the threshold the output value depending on the activation function what kind of an activation function we have chosen whether it is bipolar binary identity whatever we are using the output will also take different forms for example uh, it can be for a bi binary activation function it can take two values 0 or 1 for bipolar minus 1 or plus 1 or any other values depending on other activation functions now let us say here the the, the threshold value that separates one response from the other okay one response from the other the the the, the, the dividing line in terms of the threshold which separates one response from the other is theta equals to zero when the threshold value is zero if we are taking that when yn is greater than theta it can be take it can take value one in case of binary when it is lesser than theta it is zero in case of bipolar when it is greater than theta the threshold value the yn is greater than theta net input it is plus one when it is lesser than theta it is minus one so theta equals to zero the threshold value if we are taking that as the reference then we can let uh, we can put the whole thing the net input equation as x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus b equals to zero considering theta equals to zero then we can write it in this way by bringing x2 on the lhs side and we can write it as minus w2 by w1 x1 minus b by w2 so here if we write the equation in this way during the learning or training process we can determine the values of w1 w2 and the bias value by applying suitable set of input combinations of x1 and x2 we continuously change the values of x1 and x2 and by that we can determine the value of the two weight signals the weight associated with the synaptic connections and the bias values so this will correspond an equation of a line which will be something like this and then on the basis of that we can divide it into the quadrants as we uh, 
we see in coordinate geometry first second third and fourth and then we can determine in the first quadrant for a particular combination of the input values x1 and x2 what will be the output response similarly in the second quadrant when the x2 is positive x1 is negative value for any particular combination of the input x1 and x2 what will be the output whether it is positive or negative that is whether it is 0 or 1 in case of binary or whether it is 1 or minus 1 in case of bipolar similarly in the third quadrant similarly in the fourth quadrant so here this equation okay this equation okay this whole equation x2 is equal to minus w2 by w1 x1 minus b by w2 this controls everything and on the basis of that we have uh, found out this whole line which intercepts the two axes at two points if we assign different values the equation of the line will be different and this line this blue line on the basis of this equation it is called as the decision line okay decision line where the response above the line and the below the line it will be different and our objective is to find what is what whether above the line it is positive or negative whether it is below the line it is positive or negative and also in these four quadrants for different combination of inputs that is x1 and x2 okay these two inputs okay here x1 and x2 which constitutes the x and y axis for any combination of these inputs what will be the output response so here the decision line is the separating line okay this line which separates one response from the other whether it is zero from one or one from minus one so depending on the activation function threshold value weights the bias values the input combination everything can change and it all happens during the learning or training process okay so the the number the more the number of input combinations we apply to this equation the more accurately the value of the weights and bias bias the values can be determined and also one response can be separated out from the other okay so this is the whole concept of linear separability okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much